got a day off. What we're doing is I've got my exercise done. It's windy, it's cold, it was raining last night. But we are going to the Weldon Springs containment cell. It's a tomb for uh, radioactive and chemical oil. And during the Second World War, uh, 1942, they built a uh, explosives or munitions plant out there in Weldon Springs. And by the end of the war, it was the largest explosive manufacturing plant in the world. Well, then after the Second World War, they finally shut down the explosives manufacturer there and there was all the chemical waste left. But we had gone into the Cold War of the Soviet Union and now they were creating nuclear weapons. And uh, there at the Weldon Springs site, they started processing uranium. So then they also had radioactive waste and contamination. And it ended up being a super fun site. So they built this huge tomb where they encapsulated all of the chemical and radioactive waste. And it's actually uh, got uh, interpretive center, like it's a park or something like that. And uh, there's an eight mile trail that starts out there. And uh, you can actually walk to the very top of it and overlook uh, the whole area. Okay, we got reconstituted prairie here. So the Department of Energy, they still monitor this site. I don't know, maybe they check to see if it starts vibrating or the mound starts to swell or glow between the rocks here. You know, I don't know if any of this will turn out using this microphone with this wind. I might have to do it again on another day. Oh, it's picking up here. And at its peak of production, there were more than 5,200 people working here in 1943 they had 1,038 buildings. Yeah, the steps are done, now it's an incline. Well, they finished this disposal cell in 2001 and it covers 45 acres, 75 feet tall. I don't know what's under it. This is it. Well, there's no sign saying don't stand. They produce 710 million pounds of TNT and 33 million pounds of DNT. DNT, I wonder what that is. Is that plastic explosives? Yeah, out that way is where I live, one of those communities. It's not so bad down here, but oh my gosh, that one was just howling up there. It, I can't even put up the tripod, it was gonna blow it over. Where are my sunglasses here? Hey, how you doing today? Hey, how are you? Nice interpretive center here. In 20 minutes, they got 125 8th graders coming by. We're in the Bush Wildlife area here, and we're looking for one of these uh, World War II bunkers. I talked to the lady at the Interpretive Center, and she said that they were built to store the explosives. And the explosives that they were making were going out so fast, uh, they didn't even sit. There was no storage at all like they had originally anticipated, uh, just because of the need for the explosives was so great. This is Lake 37, 38. So are there 38 lakes and ponds? Lake number 37, nobody here. Probably a little breezy for fishing out here. I can see a deer down there. He's standing to the right of the road. There he goes, back to the right, back into the forest. There's another lake. I'm not having much luck finding it. Okay, here's one of the bunkers. These things are spread out all over in there. They're huge. They spread them out because if one blew, it wouldn't take the others with them. They're all over here. Built during the Second World War. Big steel door on here. It looks like they welded it. Yeah, that's what they did. It'd be nice to see the inside of this. Counterweight. Oh man, hear that echo in there. Can I put a camera in there? Okay, here's another one. Got a concrete circle in front of it with a post with wire on it. I wonder if that was a, yeah, that must have been an electric light or something illuminating the door. Well, wait a minute. Let's see what we got here. 
Oh my gosh. This one's open. Man. I carry a flashlight in my bag. This is an artifact from the Second World War is what this is. You know, if I'd be smart, I'd take my sunglasses off. It's empty. Graffiti. It's got a curved roof. But big. Oh, nine. Well, happy birthday, Philip. Hello. We got an echo in here. I wonder how many of these things are around here. Well, there were at least 60 of them. Here's another one. Three of them right here. Looks like that's just to the south of Lake 33. Yeah, there's another one over there, but I don't think I want to get stuck in the mud. Found another one here. Let's take a look at this one. Oh yeah, this one's open also. Tires. Looks like they actually used this one for storage for a while. Okay, now this one's a little different. That center section is gone with the concrete. Look at this. You can see it's got that raised platform there. Looks like Mark's been here. That one's still got the concrete ring in front. That one's sealed up. Looks like 9-0 is sealed. Yeah, it's welded closed. Okay, there's the map. I found 11 bunkers. Okay, this is number 33. There's one other I noticed like this. And somebody went through an awful lot of trouble building this concrete thing here to make sure that nobody opened this door. Instead of welding it, they built this. I'm guessing they were gonna fill that with dirt, but finally just ran out of money or decided that was enough. This one is pinned. Everything's in there. I told Chris there's a uh, turkey shortage this year. We better get one early, and that's why we're going to Trader Joe's right now. And uh, she brought up the fact that I told her there was a wine shortage last year. And I think before that, it was the egg shortage. Is that what it was? So I think I got a little bit of a credibility problem here. So I'm really hoping they're short on turkeys by the time we get there. <laughs> I hope they have one. I hope they have one, too. Okay, it's bad news. Today's the 12th. We're a day early. 